loving friends, peace and grace to you in the name of Jesus Christ. My name is Mi Rang Baek. I'm lead pastor here at Gino Park United Methodist Church. We welcome all of you worshiping with us on YouTube and Facebook today. We encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, like our Facebook page, and follow us on Instagram. Also, please visit our website, www.ginoparkumc.org, and continue to give your tithes and offerings through our website. Loving friends, today is the third Sunday after Epiphany. Let us center and prepare ourselves for worship. join me for the call to worship. We gather together in this space to sing praises to our God. We are old and young, men and women, all children of God. We gather together to pray for each other and to pray to God. We come from all walks of life, but we are all children of God. We gather to listen, to be in fellowship and to celebrate our God. We are poor and rich, sick and healthy, strong and weak. Together, we are the people of God. Together, let us worship. Amen.
I invite you to share your joys or concerns. Comment down below. We want to celebrate and pray with you. Let us pray. Holy One, we confess that at times the world gets to us. We shake with frustration. We sink with despair. We find it hard to sing songs of praise or even to smile. O oh God, Remind us of your covenant with us. You are, we are your people, and you are our God. You come to us as one of us and laid down your life for us and live again. In you, may we find renewed hope. In you, we, may, we find, we, may we remember that we are not alone. In you, may we know you have called us to love one another, to belong to each other, to, to be one. May our faith be renewed and our hope restored. For when we love one another, we love you. Help us, O oh Lord, to dedicate our lives to you, to offer our best for you, to be of service to you by serving in your world. As we have lifted before you the names of people and situations near and dear to us who need your healing touch and your tender mercies, we have also lifted ourselves up as people in need of your grace. In our world, there is war, there is oppression, there is hunger, there is violation, there is brokenness. We have not been good stewards of the world we have not cared for one another lord heal us and heal this world and now fill us with your spirit as we pray jesus taught his disciples and us our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 4, verses 12 through 23. 
Now, when Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and made his home in Capernaum by the sea, in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali, so that what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun, land of Naphtali, on the road by the sea, across the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And for those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. From that time, Jesus began to proclaim, repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he said to them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of people. Immediately, they left their nets and followed him. As he went from there, he saw two other brothers, James, a son of Zebedee, and his brother John, in the boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets, and he called to them. Immediately, they left the boat and their father and followed him. Jesus went throughout all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness among the people. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Loving friends, in 2014, I volunteered in a hospital as a spiritual caregiver. A patient shared with me why she left her home church. She addressed that she grew up in a Catholic church, got married there. Unfortunately, her marriage did not go by his will, her will, and she divorced. She felt fallen in the thick darkness. She needed light. She needed support from her family and friends and her, her priest. One day, she attended a Sunday Mass. She prayed to God. She confessed, I am a sinner, Lord. Have mercy on me. As the Eucharist began, she began to experience that she could not be allowed to take a Eucharist bread and cup. Her priest told her that according to the scripture and the church tradition, divorce is sin. And she broke the biblical and she, uh, the church law of marriage. She was not eligible anymore to take the Eucharist our communion. That day, she went to the church to find comfort. However, judgment and rejection were given to her. Her soul was broken very hurtfully. She stated that that day she got another type of divorce, which means separation from the church. She finally left her home church and stayed outside the church until her neighbor knocks on the door of her home and invited abroad and include her into one of, one, of church, one of the United Methodist churches. When I listened to her story, I felt sadness and my heart was broken. I reminded her that Jesus proclaimed that the Sabbath was made for humans, not humans for the Sabbath. Every tradition is made for humans, not to manipulate, but to, and, uh, but, to um, Im, Im, um, but to serve. I do not want any more anyone here to get a bias of a Catholic church from the story that I told and shared. I do not want any of you to think that Methodist Church is better placed than, a, that, than the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church has had its tradition and theology of, of the Eucharist, while the Methodist Church has our own, has owned, has owned the tradition and theology of Holy Communion. There are many different understanding between the two churches, and there are many types of Catholic churches as well. Differences, however, should always be respected in the light of one apostolic universal church founded on the sacrificial love of Jesus Christ. Therefore, differences should not be treated as, a, as an issue of which one is right or which one is wrong, what is better or what is worse. 
traditions and theologies in denomination or religion can be meaningful and influential as helping people to understand basics such as who God is, who Jesus Christ is, what humanity is, what the church is, and so on. Above all, more importantly, what Jesus would want us to do is not to keep one's church tradition or theology itself, but to embody God's love that Jesus has shown to his followers and to accomplish God's will in our life as Jesus did. For this, for this sake, we have to let our own behind and then jump into the sea of God's infinite possibilities, which look like unpredictable. Therefore, I want to tell you that it is the faith to pause before Jesus Christ, to lay down what I have, and to jump into the sea of the love of God, into the mission of God, in responding to God's call through Jesus the Christ. The spirit of adventure and the desire to make progress of faith are needed. All of us, all of you Christians, put yourselves into the way of Jesus Christ, namely the way of the cross. It is because Christ needs your hands and your feet and your confidence and passion for continuing to, to, ch uh, to change the world. According to the Gospel of Matthew this morning, Jesus began his ministry when he heard that John the Baptist was arrested. As we know by Matthew, Jesus was born in the promise of God to save God's people. He was worshipped as, as a newborn king by the wise man. But Mary and Joseph and the baby Jesus had to flee into Egypt from King Herod's life-threatening power. When Jesus was baptized, he was proclaimed as God's beloved son. When he was tempted and tested in the wilderness, he firmly stood himself on God's promise and words. However, all these things let Jesus begin his ministry for the kingdom of God. However, when he heard John the Baptist was arrested, his mind and his spirit were touched and moved. He began to jump into the seas of God's love and to make differences, finally. Therefore, we should know who and why arrested John the Baptist, who had been called God's righteous prophet among people at that time. In, in his days, the Roman emperor, Empire occupied and ruled over the Mediterranean world, including Judea and, and Samaria and Galilee and all Palestinian areas. Herod and his sons were kings appointed by the Roman Empire, Roman Emperor. In other words, the power of the empire covered and controlled Judeans and Gal Galileans and all people around the Mediterranean world. Jewish religious leaders and Herod's sons who were kings of the territories oppressed and exploited the people in the name of the Roman Emperor. John the Baptist, who was called God's righteous prophet, had not been in silence. He proclaimed, the kingdom of God is near. He asked people to be prepared for it. He baptized people at the Jordan River. He gave warnings. He gave critics to religious leaders like scribes, priests, Pharisees. He called them son of snakes and addressed that they had to make fruits of re repentance. John the Baptist was a person who had made the powerful and wealthy discomfort and inconvenient. Religious and political authorities hated John the Baptist. Finally, Herod Antipas arrested him. I imagine that when John the Baptist was arrested, he was at the Jordan River to baptize people. 
I, it means that John the Baptist was not in the town or city where crowd gathered, but religious and political powers thought that they had to make his mouth silent and had, had to separate him from any contact with people. John the Baptist, who had been working as a light of righteousness, was unjustly stigmatized as a riot, treated as a dangerous activist and um, agitator, and finally suppressed by the ruling powers at that time. He finally was beheaded. I assume when John the Baptist was arrested, there would, would be companions or people together with him. Matthew's Gospel reports when Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and made his home in Capernaum by the seas in the territory of Jebelun and Nephetali. Why did Jesus withdraw to Galilee and leave his town Nazareth? The Greek word of withdrew is anehorism. The same word is used in the Gospel of Matthew to describe that Mary and Joseph and the baby Jesus fled, fled, to, fled to Egypt because of Herod um, in Matthew chapter 2 verse 4 and later moved from Judea to Galilee because of um, Judea to Galilee because of one of Herod's son. It also is appeared in Matthew 14, chapter 14, verse 13, to describe Jesus' moving into the wilderness after John the Baptist was beheaded. Therefore, through the word withdrew in the text, we can assume that political authorities, powers, ruled over territories and threatened people's body, mind, spirit, Jesus had a place to be free from the triant tri terrible forces and to launch his ministry. So Galilee became Jesus' central place for his ministry. It was the territory of Herod Antipas who was arrest, who arrested and finally beheaded John the Baptist. Matthew says Jesus made his home in Capernaum by the sea. He planted his, his life deeply into a local in Galilee. In other words, Jesus made a new mission center of the kingdom of heaven in Capernaum by the Sea of Galilee. What did it mean to people at that time? Merely speaking, although life, threat, life, life threats were there around him always, Jesus never gave up people in oppression. He became willing to, God, willing to be God's everlasting presence and God's righteousness for the oppressed and the needy. Jesus committed his life to teach God's uh, messianic hope and vision and guide people into the presence and reign of God to transform people's life. Jesus was not afraid of death for this task. He became willing to be the light of God for people in darkness. Yes, he was the light, and he is the light. The Gospel of Matthew never hesitates to call Jesus as the Messiah the promised and anointed one who fulfilled the promise and prophecy of God written in the book of Isaiah. Specifically, Matthew understands Jesus' relocating and settling, settling process in Galilee and his ministries and teachings in the light of the pro prophetic tradition. Jesus intentionally followed the prophetic tradition rather than Jerusalem temple tradition. In Jesus' days, Jews expected that the Messiah was going to come to save them and to restore the kingdom of David. David. They hoped to get the power more than the power of the Roman emperor. However, God's messianic vision and fulfillment in Jesus Christ looks like far away from, from, the, from that expectation. 
it shows the image of the servant, which is humble and sacrificial. Therefore, personal and communal transformation is essential to God's promise and the prophecy of the salvation of God. It is very important to know that Jesus followed the prophetic tradition as we read in the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus called fishermen, Andrew and Peter and James and John. They were not siblings or descendants of the temple priests or workers. They were Galilean fishermen. And then he said, come and follow, come and follow. I will make you fish for people. That's all that Jesus said. Jesus, Jesus did not promise anything like pr uh, prosperity. However, the four fishermen called by Jesus immediately let all things in their hands behind and began to follow him. It is faith. It is their faith. They jumped into the life of Jesus itself. They, they stepped on the way of Jesus. They was the spirit. There was, a, there was a spirit of adventure. There was the desire to make progress of faith. Loving siblings in Christ, Jesus calls us again to come and follow him. Jesus urges, repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. Change your mind, change your attitude, change your behaviors, change your thinking, change everything in you. Why do we have to change? It is for the kingdom of God. If you want to be in the kingdom of God, if you're going to get into the kingdom of God, it is not optional to change your, yourself, but necessary to do so. One day, a new pastor just came to a new church, asked his parishioners, who wants change? Most people lifted their hands and said, we need change. The new pastor was excited and said, who wants to change? People began to look around then and began to avoid um, eye contacts from the, from the preacher. Final, the final challenge was given to the people. Who wants to lead that change? People did not make any response and left the church immediately. Brothers and sisters in Christ, I'm not saying that it is easy to change yourself. However, I would like to ask you to look at the cross and to adjust yourself on the cross again and again, day by day, moment by moment. It is because the power of God is given to us through the cross of Jesus. Bring yourself to the cross of Jesus again and meditate why Jesus was crucified, for whom he died. You may experience the power of God freely prepared and given for you. Thanks be to God. Amen. Loving friends, receive the benediction. May the love of God the Creator, God the Redeemer, and God the Sustainer rest upon you and live through you. 
this day and always. So now go in peace. Amen.